Today, our guest is Tomasz Opasinski. Hi, Tomasz. Hello, hi. <laughs> hi, Gia. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. Of I really course, of it. course. It's uh, our pleasure to have you here. And I can't wait to get all that knowledge. Ah, uh, okay. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it's going to be long podcast. It's going to be seven hours long podcast. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll put it on the, you know, fast. <laughs> <laughs> fast, like triple speed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll speak with the funny voices. But anyway, so Thomas, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure to have you Thank here. You. Thank you. I, uh, I saw your resume. It's uh, very impressive. Thank you. And, um, you, you know, the fact that you work with big companies like Netflix and so on and so forth is incredible. So please tell us, you're from Poland, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so I was born and you, raised in Poland. Yeah, so you yeah. emigrated at some point and you've made this career, um, which is very inspiring uh, oh, okay. for a lot of people uh, out there who want to do what you do. And, um, you know, um, and at the same time, we can maybe share with the people who would like to make a similar career as yours, mm -hmm. um, certain very practical tips, practical knowledge. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I can tell you all about it. So it, it all started um, around the year 2000, actually, in Poland. So I used to work in advertising agencies in Poland where I was the, sort of a graphic designer, art director kind of mm -hmm. guy. And then... One day with, with, with my roommate at that time, we've decided that there, there's something out there. There's something that is calling me, something that I would love to explore. I had no idea what it is. I had no idea that I'm going to be doing what I'm doing. But I knew it that something was out there, that what I'm doing at the moment was not that. I was happy to some extent, but there were moments where I said, no, no, there, there's something else. There was a search for something. Like with an, with an artist, you see it often that they, they have to explore and, 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 and try a few things. So whatever, whatever I've been trying so far back then was not that. It was not this, not that, not this, not that. You, be, you can become good at something, but there is, you don't put your heart and soul into mm -hmm. it, right? So I thought of like, you know what? Why not challenge myself? Why not go out of my comfort zones completely? That means changing your language, changing the, 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 the continent, actually. And what if I can try and be survive for years? So the idea be, was just to be here for a year in the States. So along with my friend, we, we've sent a bunch of resumes. I think I've sent about like 400 resumes mm -hmm. to, to every single agency mm -hmm. uh, that I could uh, find online back then. And uh, we've sent the resumes nothing actually panned out immediately later on maybe two responded and one of them actually uh, uh, decided to okay you know what let's let's bring this polish guy here we'll see what we can do so i did prepare my portfolio that was a, a, a very uh, thoughtful process so to create a portfolio was was actual panning my future it was not showing who i am but who i want to be so at the time, if I was to get this job, I would not do whatever I was doing and was not happy with. The point was to present myself in a way that I will do what I wanted to uh, do, actually. Mm -hmm. And that was super tricky because I had no idea what I want to do. So I did illustrations, I did brochures and all sorts of marketing uh, materials on it. It was nicely packaged, easily to navigate, so people would not uh, 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 suffer when browsing, right? So we sent this and uh, I mentioned one company from Milwaukee responded. Uh, so we started the process of visas and, 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 and all the immigration paperwork, which turned out to be really stressful and really, uh, really complicated. That's very, back then, it was really discouraging. I can only assume now it's even more discouraging. Mm -hmm. So back then, there was like hundreds of documents. Everything had to be translated, blah, 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 blah. And that was a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and back then, I had no uh, 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 knowledge of English, so that was even harder for me to to do any that of that. That sounds very familiar. Yes, yes. So I had to, I had to, I had to run everything by certified translators and stuff like this. It was costly as well. So I had to be darn sure that this is what I want to do. If not, there is a nice chunk of money was you know put into translations and all the, uh, uh, um, the certified mails going between me and Milwaukee. When was so that? That was two thousand one. Mm -hmm. That was early two thousand one. And, um, and that worked out. So I got the visa for a year and uh, I was waiting for something to happen actually in Poland. So that was, I was hoping that was my last thing. I was like, maybe I'll find this job here. I won't have to switch languages. I won't have to do anything. And it didn't happen. So that actually helped me to, 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 to immigrate. 
I was mm -hmm. like, okay, nothing happened here. I didn't find it here. Let's see what, what's going to happen there. So uh, I landed in Milwaukee in this uh, August 13, 2001 um, and started working. So again, without English, the only thing I had to speak for me was my portfolio. That was the only language I had. And that turned out to be pretty beneficial for what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. So finding a communication through like between me and you through images is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Imagine for us to communicate something that y y both of us will imagine and we can align on and we both will be happy. This is this is this is actually actual skill. So I've been developing this since. So after Milwaukee, there was a company uh, from uh, actually Beverly Hills. Uh, they found my website. They were like, hey, would you like to uh, 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 do uh, uh, work with us? At the same time, what was happening in Milwaukee business uh, at the company where I was uh, hired as uh, 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 for uh, temp, let's say for a year, was not going as well as, as Prema. So uh, there was this uh, on the horizon, there was this going back to Poland immediately and then the uh, uh, chance of working in Beverly Hills appeared. So mm -hmm. what do I do? What do I do? Uh, okay, Beverly Hills, let's do it. So they tested me and uh, worked out pretty well. I had never done posters in my life prior to that. So mm -hmm. that was all new to me. In English, in a totally different city, uh, uh, creating uh, for the biggest studios stuff that I have never done before. Pretty, pretty challenging. I was not so uh, optimistic about the outcome, but uh, I got to say it worked out. Uh, it was not as hard as I was imagining this. So that's the that's the maybe piece of advice I can give. Whatever you're imagining, it's probably half of that. <laughs> literally. It's, it's, not, it's not as bad. You, once you're in it, you, you, you find ways. Literally, this is your your curiosity, your your uh, uh, innovative side of, of, of your mind, your friends. Uh, 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 all this helps. It's not like you're on your own. You know, I would have never done this if I was on my own. I had amazing friends surrounding me. So we started with a bunch of guys at the same at the same time and we're all supporting each other. I don't know this. Maybe you can help me. Maybe you can help me with this and that. Mm -hmm. So there was the support going on, which was amazing. Like for a year, I've learned so much that I could never imagine this learning on my own, mm -hmm. like just me sitting there. Yeah, when you the, surround yourself with mm -hmm. amazing professionals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we observe each other. We were given real tasks with real deadlines mm -hmm. and uh, and the job was going as planned. I was never late and uh, we had fun actually doing mm -hmm. that. So I moved here. It was all uh, fun. But at the same time came the decision, do I go back? And if yes, why? <laughs> right. What, what keeps me there? So. Language was sort of in a decent spot back then. So we we're talking year 2002, 2003. I could communicate verbally, not, not just in a visual way. Uh, I had friends. I had a, a good job. Um, I had, a, uh, I think I had a motorcycle at that time. Uh, that, that was fun. In LA, uh, riding motorcycle, awesome. Um, when it doesn't PCA. rain. <laughs> when it doesn't rain, yeah. But going PCH and yeah, all those yeah, places, yeah. oh, it's amazing. So... I was, um, you know, uh, inclined to stay. Uh, but again, uh, immigration, 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 immigration. Uh, countless uh, uh, paperwork that had to be filled. Uh, countless um, immigration uh, attorney uh, meetings and stuff like this. And to, fees. To, to, uh, fees and extend, extensions and things were not on a, on, a, on, a, on a good side here. So there was always something like for first few years, there was this moment like, you know what? Screw that. Maybe I can go and work in Europe with just my ID. I don't need all this immigration stuff and wasting money on this mm -hmm. in a way. Wasting. Um, but, you know, with every new job, with the new people, with the, the, a better knowledge of, of, of poster making, the, the Poland was drifting away. If mm -hmm. I was to go back, is it worth paying another $5,000 to switch the jobs just for visa transfer? Yeah, that's, that's kind of expensive. Um, uh, or do I go back and start over almost in a way? I'm happy with this, what I'm doing. You know what? Shit, let's stay, right? Let's let's carve a niche for myself. So. Each one of us had made that decision at some point. We're yeah. all immigrants here. <laughs> yeah. It's at some point, you're like, yeah. what's there? I have to redo not even those last two, three years, but a few more because people are like growing in completely different directions, yeah. right? So luckily for me, I had this realization. I was like, you know what? it may be harder actually uh, uh, to go back than stay. So I invested in language for sure. Mm -hmm. That was that was a, a, a conscious decision to 
speak uh, and and read and write uh, because without that uh, I had this feeling that I would never be able to communicate on a, on a higher level with with the, with the other creatives or with the studios with the filmmakers and stuff like this so I've decided to consciously to talk to everybody to the point where I was I'm assuming I was annoying to some people and I apologize <laughs> for that uh, but I wanted to talk I wanted to talk I wanted to talk I was I used to be a super shy guy now you can literally shut me up uh, but this is what the podcast happened is over. podcast is over so <laughs> the next six hours we're going to talk about stuff um, so but this, this everything simultaneously sort of grew uh, in me. I, I, I got slightly old, older. I had a different perspective on, on, on things. With every single new job, those new experience, new new victories, new 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 posters, new new um, new things that I have learned. I'm, I'm not saying that I've learned everything, but there was every few weeks there was something challenging, and I was like, oh, this is awesome, right? Mm -hmm. I've learned that. I've learned that. So um, I'm learning, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Right. This is I think this is what we want from our jobs to constantly learn mm -hmm. and then then uh, never, never stop. So I kept going from from job to job. Um, at some point I got the green card, uh, which was which was an amazing day in my life. Uh, that means literally no longer thinking about visa transfers, uh, mm -hmm. approvals, disapprovals, waiting periods. You are here. You are here and do what you should be doing. You should focus on, on your life, on your, on your job, on your friends, on your family and stuff like this. So I had a chance to get this part of my brain actually and put it to work with something else, mm -hmm. with something productive. Or not, at least not, relax it. Or just, well, at least yeah. relax it. Oh, I've been relaxing back, uh, back then uh, for, for quite some time after, after <laughs> the green card. Um, and that was also a, a, a somewhat interesting moment where I wanted to start something on my own. I wanted to start freelancing for, for a moment. Since I knew so many people around, it's like, you know what, maybe maybe I should freelance for, for, a, while, for a moment. I've been working in the companies for like, I don't know, seven or ten years back then. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should start. And I did that. Uh, I, I went to, I went to, uh, I started my own company with a friend of mine. We had it for two years. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, but I've learned so much uh, while, uh, while having it. Uh, it was a tough time uh, to close it down, but there was no uh, 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 there was no progress that I always wanted. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, let's let's close it down. And we'll see what else we can do. I've been freelancing since then with like I think every single studio and and a few other people uh, around the world actually, uh, not only Hollywood. Uh, I, I, I keep my ties with with Poland, so I design sometimes for mm -hmm. for uh, for Poland as well. And then after posters, for all those years, I was somewhat. Uh, responsible for for uh, 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 training new designers. That was sort of my thing. I don't know why it became my thing. I, I, I had no idea, but it was always my thing. It's like, oh, Tomas, here is a new guy. Maybe you, you guys can talk. You can teach him that. I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And early in the, like, maybe that was my third or fourth year here, I've seen, uh, uh, I saw patterns within poster making. So each poster may look different, but there are some patterns that you, you, you can use for your advantage. So I've, I've created uh, poster design systems. And because based on that, we were sort of training new designers. And uh, there was a moment where I was uh, hired as a, uh, uh, I was working as a creative director at Ignition. That was my last job prior to Netflix, mm -hmm. where my uh, 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 later <laughs> boss found one of my actually video interviews and, and uh, he literally said, it's like, I like what you do, but there is something you don't have. It's data. We do have a data. I was initially, I was not data, so, data as far as like, what's, what, what's good, uh, what, what, what people see, what, works. what, what works, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. The only thing I had was some, uh, somebody's opinion, mm -hmm. which may or may not be right. So after, after a few interviews, I was on Netflix. And that was complete shift of, of my career from poster making and being hands on. I was directing like I, I was supposed to for the last few years. So uh, back in the agency time, that was directing means doing by yourself as well too. Mm -hmm. So you have designers, you have senior directors, art directors helping you uh, with, the, with the creative vision, but you also are a maker too yourself. So you create 3D environments, you do matte painting, you, do, you create posters, you uh, sometimes you have to finish even them. Uh, where at Netflix, that was all behind. It was only left to uh, verbal uh, creative mm -hmm. direction. So all this language that I was uh, pushing myself uh, with found its place. So now I can explain, now I can uh, um, uh, 
articulate mm-hmm. in, in a way. So uh, looking back, seven, ten years back, it was good investment. Now I can actually participate in this. So that was good investment back then. Now uh, what I do, I can tell you briefly, I'm, I'm uh, innovation creative, meaning I think of other ways of doing uh, 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 creating artwork or um, innovating literally within within Netflix. Uh, it's an amazing job. Innovating I, as far as the films. Uh, innovating as far as the, maybe technology or imagery or 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 a, a, a visual part of Netflix, mm-hmm. static visual mm-hmm. uh, part of Netflix, some motion. But what it does to your brain is, I have to have this database of what I have done always in my head because we're we're talking about thousands of images and the emotions within those images and composition and the coloring i have to remember everything i've done which is which is which is kind of crazy it's a lot of imagery um so this is one part uh the other part is to be of help to others that don't have this experience so uh i have to find a way to explain why certain things work why certain thing uh, things within imagery don't work like facial expressions or body language or something like this so i have to find a way i have to be actually like in-house cinematographer in a way mm-hmm. uh, which is which is kind of funny i i don't have education in this field but that was just by practicing right so that's part uh and the third part will be literally finding a new ways of 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 um presenting this to viewers of uh, of of producing this uh that it's later being uh presented and it's what often it creates a moment of me being misunderstood and that's part of the job and i I love it but that's if any creatives are watching it part of your job will be uh misunderstood and that's really discouraging to some point or motivating i i choose the other way the motivating part this is it if uh, if you dig deep enough, you won't be understood at the I- immediate uh, 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 moment. You have to find a, a way to present this to somebody to get this uh, idea developed. And well, further. Give us a, uh, an example of what could be misunderstood. Uh, let me think about something abstract. I can't use any... any yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's, say, let's say you have a bottle of wine, right? You have a bottle of wine. Between a cork and the wine, there is a little gap of air, right? And you're trying to find a new way of opening this bottle. Like there are other ways, you know, with a screw, uh, with whatever tools you may use. But if what if you want to introduce new tool that will open this wine for you? Most people will uh, relay on their on their instincts and what their habits, right? They're like, oh, if it's not the screw, you won't be able to open wine, right? But what if you shake it? I don't know. What if you create some sort of ultrasound machine that will uh, make this cork pop, right? What if you create? I saw uh, a video once where, like, a, a, a man takes his shoe off, and puts a bottle of wine exactly, and yeah. knocks the wall. Yeah. So that's creative. So some people imagine him presenting this to others; they'll be like, "Yes, good luck with that." But I think he gets this wine open, right? Mm-hmm. So what if I was to invent There's a tool yeah. that actually hugs the, the uh, neck of the bottle and creates some sort of force that pushes the cork up? So there, there's 99.9% possibility that people would not understand you or will think that you're slightly off and they'll redirect you in your, in your direction. But there is a certain group that will appreciate it, not even appreciate it, but ask you to think of more uh, of those. So I found this ground, uh, pardon for uh, such a random uh, example of wine when we're talking about Netflix, but this this was a good way to visualize this. So I found not even a group that sort of encourages this kind of thinking is open to understand it and it sort of it, it participates in pushing this even further. What if, yes, this is this is a decent idea, but what if we do this? What if we do that? Keep thinking about this. Okay, mm-hmm. let, we'll see you next week. So this, I describe it as a, my best job ever. I've been there for more than three years. Mm-hmm. And this constant push for for my brain to produce ideas, it's, 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 it's very stimulating. It's mm-hmm. like yoga to some. You know, you mm-hmm. go to yoga or you go to the gym. You come You're out of it. You're building some and, muscle there. And yes, yes, this is, this is muscle. Yeah. This is crazy yeah. muscle. And uh, 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 so misunderstanding aside, the produce of that, the pure ideas are, are awesome. I wish I can, I can give you a sample, but I can't. But Maybe something from the past that's already out there? Let me think of something. <laughs> I'll think of something and I'll mm-hmm. let you know. But there is, there is 
this part. So all those years of, of being creative in a visual field added to this moment where I can have it in my brain, use it, and be, be actually ahead of most, which is fantastic. So all this experience, I have it. I've been there. I've done that multiple times. I saw through repetition, I saw what works, what doesn't. Now I have this shortcut. Mm -hmm. If uh, I work with people that did not have this experience, uh, they may see it in a weird way. Like, you know, when you when you were at school and you're with this one kid that knows math the best. So when your teacher is drawing this, I don't know, equation on on, on the board, the kid knows the answer. He knows that it's I seven. That kid. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Yes. So, yeah. So <laughs> imagine I'm that kid when it comes to certain visual yeah. aspects of it. That's why sometimes it's really hard to explain it to, to, to people. So if you're that kid, you completely understand. Other, oh, other kid, <laughs> oh, yeah. other, other kid look at you weird, right? It's yeah. like, how do, you, how, how do you know? I don't know. My brain just knows it, right? That's the shortcut. I don't know. Is it mm -hmm. biology or something? Mm -hmm. Your brain just knows it. So there are certain areas that I just know. Uh, mm -hmm. It's based on my experience, maybe instincts or something like this. Uh, so I'm using it. I'm using it mm -hmm. wisely. So and it's it's awesome. This 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 challenging myself. It's it's really interesting actually. Yeah, it it's, it's just like mm -hmm. I think it's the best aspect of life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, we constantly it's, challenge yeah. ourselves, like by moving to a different country, by yep. changing language professions yeah. uh, and languages. Uh, you name it, like, uh, the, but that's the uh, challenge. Is the ultimate way of growing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I'm 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 the happiest person on the planet, right? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super happy. So, uh, since maybe uh, seven or ten years ago, I did not think about going back to Poland for for good. So I go and visit my mom, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and that's it. This is my life here. So nice. Yeah, it's super fun. So. Um, some of our viewers um, mm -hmm. most likely uh, are actually uh, pursuing the career that you've got, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them are going to be in different countries. Some of them are going to be in different states, different cities, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Um, would you encourage them to move or would you encourage them to find the place there? Because immigration is such a, like, and I'm glad you kind of mm -hmm. hadn't talked about it. The thing is, is like people don't understand how difficult that is. Oh, yeah. And um, it, for some, it, it's easier than yeah. for the others, but it's it's an issue. Yeah. But besides that, LA is a hard city. It's mm -hmm. it's not an easy it's city. It's really interesting. <laughs> yes, it's it's got the Plus. personality on its own, you know, and oftentimes you have to really kind of understand who you want to be associating yourself with mm -hmm. because a lot of people look really good, they're but they're really people not. People come here for different reasons. I right. Guess. So um, I don't know. My my, I mean, I did similar thing uh -huh, to you uh -huh, yeah i moved uh -huh. here like a while ago uh -huh. uh, with my two kids oh really? single mom yeah. Oh, God. So, yeah so that that was me doing next time i'm interviewing you <laughs> <laughs> so i'm basically doing this thing but i also have two little kids uh -huh, right okay. moving here i like That's i i had some easy. i had an uh, i had the language i spoke the language but uh -huh, not okay. as good uh -huh, okay. you know and every time i mean you want to drive a car it's a different you know vocabulary you yep, yep. you, you want to go and talk to like some i don't know county clerk it's that's a totally a different, different language a different thing. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's etc cetera, etc cetera. so what i've been trying to do here is um encourage people to first explore their own markets yes uh this is exactly what i wanted to say sometimes mm -hmm. We are, we are looking here at both uh, at positive uh, effects of immigration, right? But for one positive, I'm assuming there is uh, uh, tens of negative effects, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know statistics, but yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, not everybody yeah. probably uh, uh, gets through the cracks and mm -hmm. has a certain kind of personality to... to you have to have a strong personality to do that mm -hmm. because there's it's it's not beautiful. Maybe I was uh, telling you the the more beautiful side of things, but there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of 
disappointment in the system actually mm -hmm. uh, on my side there was a lot of frustration there mm -hmm. uh, frustration may create positive outcome or may create a negative outcome too so in my case it created a positive outcome but it can easily create a negative for, outcome for someone who well. is super sensitive for yeah. example yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah. and it, you know what people have the right to be super sensitive they mm -hmm. have the right to not be too strong yes. they have to, the right to be who, whoever they, they, they are yeah, yeah. Uh, and not mold themselves into you know you or me yeah you know what i mean so and um we can't tell them just be strong and do it yeah, no, yeah, 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 we, yeah, yeah, we can't yeah, yeah, you gotta be yeah. true to your own nature mm -hmm. and therefore sometimes maybe it's better to kind to of explore mm -hmm. explore your yeah, own market yeah, exactly or build something in your market so if there was a movie poster industry back in poland you know what most likely i'll be back because I spoke, I had this knowledge from here, from Hollywood. I spoke Polish better than English. I was close to my family. Why wouldn't I do this? Right. Right. But there was none. I was not, I'm not the kind of business guy to build this industry in Poland. But if there was a, a beginning of that, I would have come back, mm -hmm. I think. So what it is now is, is uh, it it's, it's not there it's okay. it's 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 not non-existent uh, mm -hmm. uh, business actually there's maybe few designers that uh, uh, are uh, tasked with this kind of work but I don't see it as here you know mm -hmm. it's different I'm not saying that it's worse or better but it's just different it's way smaller in uh, industry there <laughs> there is a business this is industry well, it's a smaller country yeah it's a smaller country we have we have way less uh, film production and stuff like this so but if there was something i would have come back and and be a partner with somebody for mm -hmm. for example but since there was nothing i have nothing to go back and that will require me to rework the whole system so immigration is not the best solution actually you you're you're leaving your friends you're leaving your people that you grew up with you're leaving your memories you are you're stripping yourself from all the good that is associated with your with your surroundings right i grew up with a really tight uh uh, uh, uh the group of friends actually hi um uh, and to just break from them it takes a lot it, it it's it drills a hole in your heart in a way uh, not to mention the family, right? right uh, so the family, friends, places, uh, 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 all those memories. Food. Food. Oh, of course. Yeah, food. Yeah. Uh, uh, traffic. Oh, no, actually not traffic. No. Uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> so you, you, you leave this, right? And then, then you build it again and you may not build it as good as there. So you are always you can always feel uh, as a foreigner, actually. So that may be a possible outcome. Um, luckily for me, I feel like home here. Uh, that was... I did not have this problem, but I know a few of my friends immigrated to, let's say, England, and they have exactly this problem. They're mm -hmm. close to Poland, but they don't, for some strange reason, they don't feel like they belong there, but they don't belong in England as well. And mm -hmm. that creates a huge problem of, mm -hmm. of, of your place on this planet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they have jobs and may be better paid uh, or may not. Uh, but they're stuck there. In the, in the world. I actually, so, yeah. for a while, I felt like a person without a place. I was, yeah. I was uh, not really home anymore. Mm -hmm. Back in my country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, uh, you're... But over here, I didn't feel like yeah. I was at yeah. home. You don't have friends. You you don't have. Uh, uh, but then it changed, and oh, okay, I have okay. amazing yeah. friends. I have but it really... requires a lot of work, it, right? It too. just requires yeah. uh, a certain type of. Mm. Well, personality. It, it, no personality, of course, but it, meaning like you have to be so tenacious. You mm -hmm. just have to keep going and oh, going yes, and yes. going no matter what. And after a while, you gain this ability to see clear. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, yes. Yes, yes. people, situations, uh, opportunities, circumstances, and and um, then and only then you start gaining real friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're lucky. Uh, yeah, if you're lucky, yes. Mm -hmm. But then this takes away from, if you were back in, in if I was back in Poland, I can focus 80% uh, of my energy on work, let's say, in development. But now I have just 20 because mm -hmm. I have other percentages that I have to focus on. 
language, I don't know, uh, friends, uh, knowing the place, uh, creating some sort of history with, with, with those friends and thinking about the future. So suddenly for what I could have in Poland, 80% of energy, now I have 25. Mm -hmm. And how do I survive with this 25 when I have to do something mm -hmm. else? You have to have a lot of energy, actually. Luckily for me, I do have a lot of energy, maybe even too much. My wife is joking that... I'm, I'm, I'm drinking Red Bull to fall asleep. Um, so this is like, kind of <laughs> her way to uh, say how much energy I do. Not very healthy. <laughs> Not very healthy, but I do have a lot of energy. Yeah. And that actually for sure helped me. Not mm -hmm. energy from Red Bull, but the original biological yeah. energy I have. Yeah. Um, so that's the word of encouragement. I will do look around. Maybe there is something you can do within your place and you can focus all, all this energy on that and this can become way more successful than possible immigration. We have we have this this illusion of immigration solving everything. Like, oh I'll go to England and everything will be beautiful. No, it's actually five times harder than in your place. Mm -hmm. um, only from people that made this jump you know that later. So that's why we're doing this. Uh, you know it that it's not that easy, you may fail. So if if you're still willing to take a risk, go for it, but give yourself a, a timeline, a, a deadline for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I won't succeed by this time, I'm going back and I'm going to refocus and mm -hmm. spend this whole energy back, whatever the country it is, uh, with, with your family or friends. Um, it's a crazy ride. Uh, would I do this again? Shit, yeah, I'll do this again. <laughs> I don't know if I would because I was way crazy because I also had kids. Who uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That's more um, I mean, if I went back in time, of course I would. Mm -hmm. But if I had to do it again right now, uh -huh. no. No, right now, no. Oh, no, 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 no. It's way too late. If I was to learn English right now, oh, God. Or some no. other language. Yeah, Imagine or some if other you have language. to move, I don't know, to Kazakhstan. Yeah, for example. Or, yeah, or, no, no. No, no, no. Um, no. So uh, tell me, what when a person's pursuing your kind of profession, uh -huh. and if they don't know anything, how would you encourage them to go about it? Meaning, like, they're just the beginners. Posters? Mm -hmm. Ha! Huh. This is really interesting uh, uh, job. Because it's not only about graphic design or knowing Photoshop or uh, knowing how to lay the type on a page. Not only it combines these three, but it actually adds something extra that it's not often uh, considered in the, in the design uh, work. It requires a little bit of knowledge of sociology, psychology, a little bit of cinematography, a little bit of uh, 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 photography, a little bit of sculpting, if you wish, if you will. Um, I think all this makes a poster maker, a, a good poster maker, successful poster maker. And I'll tell you why. You will have to do the composition. You most likely you have to gather assets from, from different sources. You will be given by cinematographers or production studios or, or distributor. You'll be given assets. But these assets may not necessarily tell the story that you want to convey through the poster. And that's your brain will have to come up with the how do I illustrate elements of those few images? How do I align them to create certain emotion or story within the viewer? Somebody walks by, has maybe five seconds, 10 seconds to look at your poster. You have to convey something. You have to in convey intrigue. You have to sell a little bit of the story. You have, of course, you have to sell talent if it's there. You have to promise something. And then how you do it that's the psychology, uh, sociology kind of part. I never went to school uh, for any of that, any of that. Uh, I had to gather this myself. That was a lot of work. There was a lot of conscience work. So I can encourage people that are looking into this area to start observing other people, start observing behavior, reactions, uh, start observing uh, customs. Uh, I grew up with, the, with the, a lot of people surrounding me. I was like a sponge. I always asked uh, uh, stories. Uh, mm -hmm. And these stories are within my brain somewhere. So each poster sort of goes into those stories. If there is a, a, a breakup, what are the stories of breakup that I have in my mind? What these people do, what they went through it, what kind of body language they had? Were they like this or they were like that, right? These are completely two diff different emotions that I was just, just showing. 
so you have to build this database. You have to truly associate them with the certain emotions. You have to learn how to create those emotions. This is like a compressed everything in mm -hmm. one in this uh, little piece of paper, not a little 27 by 40 piece of paper. And you have to be darn sure about it because if you will fail a few times with the studios, you won't be hired again. So you have to not even know what you're doing going into it. You have to have this pre-work done of this study of, 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 of human beings, right? What mm -hmm. do we do, how we do it, and how do we portray certain emotions? You have to go with this and you have to find a way to put it together. Mm -hmm. This is one part. Then there is the other part. You're your own salesperson. That's what the artists don't think about. So they, we <laughs> focus on a product, but not on how to get it into the market or how to how to sell it in a way, right? This is, may not be the best word to sell it. It seems very, uh, very dirty to me. Commercial. Like, commercial. In a way, you have to convince, you have to convey it to others. You have to be convincing, right? So how do you take all this, illustrate, and convince somebody that this is the right uh, 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 image to represent his or her uh, 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 production. So this is the other part that most people don't focus. People think uh, uh, designers or directors, they think that this is the only thing, but no, there's the other side that once you're done with this product, how do you present it to people? Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't present it or you damage the presentation, your presentation can damage actually pretty good product. So this has to be balanced. So these separate elements of a design make one package then there's the other package of this actually presenting selling uh and and uh, keeping those relationships alive mm -hmm. and that's a lot of work as well so if i was to uh, uh design something for one movie and screw it up completely let's say most likely others would never hire me mm -hmm. so there is there is something that how you present it how you sell it how you manage this mm -hmm. that leads you to another job and another job and another job and another job so the trick is and i've been asked this question a few times how did you survive right so the trick is not just to be once in hollywood because i think everybody can do it but to survive over the years mm -hmm. so this is the trick uh, uh, uh you'll be given a shot here that's not the problem this is the city of of, of chances like, mm -hmm. you want to do it? Do it. We'll see. So the trick is not to do it once, but repeat it constantly. Oh, and how do you do it? Consistency. How yeah. do you do it later, right? Mm -hmm. And that, a lot of thinking goes into it. So you have your job, you create this. This is a product, let's call it. Mm -hmm. But how do you create this uh, aura around mm -hmm. uh, that? And how do you work with people? How do you solve problems? You are there to solve their problems. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I never positioned myself as a designer as... I know everything kind of guy, guru, right? Ah, mm -hmm. you come to me, I'll, I'll tell you all about it. You shut up, I'll tell you all about it and you better take it because I told you so, right? There was never this approach. I'm here as a, as a, as a, as a tool in a way for, you, for your uh, film, for your uh, uh, production. So use me wisely. If you use me not wisely, you, you screw up, will screw up. Uh, so use me wisely, give me freedom, but give me all the information I need so I can produce this for you, right? So it goes both ways. This is never, never one way uh, street. Mm -hmm. Give me information, I'll visualize it for you. If I, uh, if my interpretation was wrong, correct me. Then I can visualize it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Most posters that I've done, they're created in batches in a way for a studio. So there, it's rarely it's one or two posters. Most likely it's hundreds of them. Name a few. Uh, name a few. I did work on like, King Kong. I did work on Harry Potter. I did work on Lord of the Rings and 500 others. <laughs> yes. Overall, it was like, I think, 560. Good selling point. <laughs> yeah, good selling, good selling point. Yeah. Uh, over the years, I have, I have OCD, so I, I, I'm taking notes of what I'm working on and how long it takes, actually. So uh, by at the end of my poster career prior to Netflix, I think I was at 560 projects. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that was a lot of, of repetition. And if I was to pay attention, a lot of learning. So it's there. very intuitive now. So it's a, the, the whole creative process of sure. storytelling through uh, poster must be 
pretty intuitive at this point. It is intuitive, but there is always something new. There is really? always a new story. There, there is always new character. There is always there's a lot of CG right now mm-hmm. that you see. So that sort of uh, uh, makes posters different a little bit. Uh, there is a lot of a lot of digital spaces that these posters are being reformatted to. So you have to think slightly different. Mm-hmm. So it's it never stopped. Actually, it's like mm-hmm. okay, this is it. It keeps forming in a different way. Now it goes into digital, and that storytelling is slightly different with the, within small digital space. Mm-hmm. So in a poster, you have di- different focal point, different different expressions, and uh, different different uh, language in a way, if if you want to call it that way. Mm-hmm. So poster one thing, and then you go into digital form that is. 60% smaller than an actual poster, you have to think about it differently. Mm-hmm. And, and and this smaller piece, it's usually amongst others on a page somewhere on the, on the, on the web. So you compete with the type actually mm-hmm. sometimes, where if you had a poster, you compete with the wall, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is pretty easy competition. Uh, it, gets, it gets slightly tougher. Uh, so it, it never stops. So I, I keep learning from whatever I'm doing right now. And applying it sometimes back to posters so it, it's this never and I, I treat it like a like a sudoku like a puzzle in a, in a way so it's, in my brain it all makes sense uh, uh sometimes too but most of my friends doesn't but uh, yeah that's my brain um, so you must have some sort of database like with you know where like you it's s- here so you're looking really? at it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is i had this thing like years ago i've decided not to surround myself with a lot of uh, uh, uh solid uh, uh, examples of library, like let's say books or, or uh, digital files. I have this thing in my head that I can store any image. I can see any image in the back of my head. This is, this is maybe my talent. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So if we were to talk about something, I can see it in, in, in my head. Mm-hmm. And what happens later is I just, uh, not just, but I visualize it. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, it's already created here, but I'm just transferring it through my hands to to the uh, uh, any form that, can, that mm-hmm. this can be. So my mind stores all sorts of images and I can remember them pretty vividly. So mm-hmm. this this is my stuff. I don't remember names. This is terrible. I'm terrible with names. Jesus. What's my name? Uh, uh, Dorothy. No, Gia. <laughs> I know Gia. That's three letters. That's super, super easy. But the names I'm terrible with. But if you ask me about uh, uh, this room 10 years from now, I will be able to describe it pretty pretty well actually Mm -hmm. uh so that's something i'm I'm visual colors and this is how i look at the images so that's another thing for for designers or or artists Uh, i've learned to look at images in a different way and that was conscious decision so whatever we were making collages let's say we have 100 images but we have to build a scene uh let's say a city scene of of crowded uh sidewalk and maybe a few cars passing by with certain uh, uh, cloud structure, right? Because clouds have a character, so you can't use every single cloud, right? So let's say we're building the scene, but I don't have it in one shot. So I have to look at different images and find maybe clouds from here, maybe this crowd uh, from here, and this person actually in the front from here, and that will make in my head a good composition. So I've learned how to look at the images and making those selections automatically. When I look at the image, uh, I dissect it in a like, few different pieces. I memorize not only the image if there is a taxi cab on, uh, let's say, uh, on Times Square. So I look at it not only as, oh, here's a cab on on a Times Square, but I look at the screens. What do they have on them? So I, I can use it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I look at the people, which directions they're going to, uh, if they're blurry or not. Do they carry something interesting in their head do, uh, or, or, or in their hand? What's on the cab? What, what's reflecting on the windows of, the, of this cab? So I can use it somewhere else. So when I go through a database of images, I have this tremendous database of, of elements. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to uh, actual creation, I have it in the back of my head and I see it like, okay, I need, the, I need a taxi cab, but I will need to switch the reflections. Oh, I know this Im- in this image, I have this awesome element that will reflect pretty well and not be a friction point. So I can automatically connect that. So that's my brain. I'm not sure if everybody has it, but uh, sees images like this. But this is what I've trained well, my brain to, to work. How did you teach yourself to do that? I was spending more time than needed on every image. So whenever we're given a, by studio or, mm-hmm. or, or a client uh, a set of images, I was consciously spending more time on it. And that became uh, sort of my thing. Mm-hmm. So I, there was this saying like um, that, you know, if you want me to chop the tree, uh, let me spend like first five hours on uh, sharpening the axe and then in 20 minutes I can chop the tree. So this is my approach to that. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not, you won't see me most likely jumping on, on, on a paper and sketching it right away. I will go through images, I will go through assets and sharpen my ax, right? I will see what's there. Then I will think of story that I want to convey and see if I have anything there. It's, it's, it's fantastic actually how it works. Mm -hmm. when, when you're done with this piece, you have this amazing feeling like literally when I said, it's like yoga for you. After yoga, you come like, <sighs> you have this, you have this moment. Literally, this is what happens after poster mm -hmm. is, is being made, every single one. So I, I do workshops sometimes too. And at the workshop, uh, there is one slide that I really pay attention to. It's most designers that I know, they're very inspired by deadline. And this is great inspiration. Deadline is the best inspiration ever. By tomorrow, you have to have it, right? So you have to sort of uh, make it happen. But what happens if you're, if you're, if you're uh, only working with the deadlines and you, you, you're releasing your artwork at the deadline, you have the emotion that is associated with it, it's, it's relief. Mm -hmm. It's not satisfaction. So if you finish this prior to deadline, you have the satisfaction. After job being well done, you're like, freaking, this was awesome, right? But what you get with the deadline is like, ah, oh, fuck, I've made it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, there is another job. And imagine what happens in your brain after a few of these or a hundred of these. Yeah, you, you, you create the, those neural patterns. That, yeah, uh, that you, you don't have yeah. a pleasure of what, yeah. what, what do you do. So... I, no dopamine. No dopamine, or, or or some weird weird chemicals in mm -hmm. your uh, in your brain or in your body that you associate the finish of your of your work of your project with with uh, uh, with not the best emotion ever, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine what may happen to your career over time. You may start hating what you do. Mm -hmm. So whatever I do, I'm trying to finish before the deadline. Focus, no matter what, or choose the deadlines that are actually reachable. Uh, not like uh, artificial deadlines that are sometimes po uh, projected on us and finish the job with satisfaction. And then after doing this for, I've been doing posters for 15, 16 years, I'm happy to do more. Yeah. I, I don't have this like, oh, here's another poster. God, no, I don't want to do it. No, you won't see it in me. I will, I will just attack it like this is my first day at the job. Yeah. Uh, and I think realizing this moment, this, this moment of, of this friction deadline if you turn it into something optimistic, oh my God, this is, this is the best job ever. But it requires a lot of work on your part to meet the deadline and organize your, your, your images, organize your thoughts and, 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 and be really self, uh, uh, self, how do, would you, we, would we call it? Uh, organized in a way or self uh, uh, discipline. Uh, discipline, yes. If you have a discipline, you can achieve that. Mm -hmm. Without it, if you're if you're procrastinating, that that mm -hmm. creates another problem and another. Yeah, that's a general rule I feel mm -hmm. like for everybody. Yeah, but uh, it's interesting. So, how do you work with colors? I use them in a, a really two different ways. One color within a poster brings you the sort of emotional uh, aspect of it, the feeling like most likely you've seen the poster there bluish in, in, in nature so that's most likely like something futuristic more actiony right when you see something more peachy yellow uh warmer colors at least in this culture here in the states most likely that will be something emotional something warm fuzzy more family so it's the family. music of poster yes yeah yeah this this is it this is literally mm -hmm. it so i use it in this way mm -hmm. but sometimes i use it to mess with you in a way so if the form if the image tells you one thing and color tells you the other thing. That's a different emotion you're getting from it. I'm trying to find, Conf I wish we had uh, some visual. Confusion? Yeah, like I'm trying to confuse you a little bit or, yeah. or, or find a new ways for color to exist. Something mm -hmm. that you would never associate color with, this color with. Like it's most likely this one of my few favorite examples is you don't associate horror movies with purple color, for example. You may associate with this with some sort of churchy things and stuff. Um, but if you were to do something gore and and create a, a purple haze on it that creates this like what is this and this is what i want i want you to stop and pause on it and dissect it and 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 and, and get some information from it so mm -hmm. i may use it this way or i may use uh, uh the way to to create a mood in, in a way mm -hmm. so i i do have uh, my favorite palette sometimes um but i love really colorful uh, images in general. So uh, going back 43 years, uh, I grew up in a city that was really, really uh, great. It was, it's a heavy industrial city. So mm -hmm. we had, uh, actually I was just talking about it yesterday. Um, we had 11 coal mines in my city. Uh, What's the city? 
uh, Buton in mm-hmm. Poland, uh, mm-hmm. southern uh, side, uh, uh, side of Poland. Uh, 60s, 70s, there was a huge boom of, of uh, uh, cold mines. So there was 11 cold mines. I think we had uh, a power plant and something else was there. Like crazy. There was a lot of ash. It was a mm-hmm. dirty city in general. So I think that's part of me reacting to this right now mm-hmm. i don't i don't want to do anything that it's dark and or gray like or Miyazaki. something like this. yeah exactly like Miyazaki, yeah. like all his mushrooms yeah. and then yeah. flowers and stuff like this so yeah reacting to to past to, right yeah, yeah. so yeah. so past was gray past was uh desaturated mm-hmm. uh slightly sad in a way but what was happening in my head was this uh, uh search for colors and posters are like i can't imagine any other industry that Mm -hmm. gives you this opportunity of using colors Mm -hmm. so each poster i think even if it's white has a tint of some sort it's uh, bluish in in the darker Mm -hmm. uh, areas or it's uh, a slightly yellowish in 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 the brightest spot so Mm -hmm. if you look at it you you'll see what i'm talking about Mm -hmm. my white is never white it's a yellowish or purplish or something like this so Mm -hmm. i use it i I love colors Mm -hmm. Uh, and i'm wearing right black jacket (laughs) <laughs> <Quite sure actually. laughs> usually i wear something colorful yeah um so besides all these things for the uh the people who really want to do what you do mm-hmm. uh let's talk about when you were talking in the beginning about observing and collecting all the data and really looking to the images and things like mm-hmm. that let's talk about that data for, mm-hmm. because that is what becomes intuitive Mm-hmm. later yeah right yeah like we collect yeah what mm-hmm. what kind of data let's just talk about it for a second like, uh, the, the behavioral things so yes. what would the people react to that was always uh, uh some of three things one was the uh we're talking about posters so one was the main message from the film that was that its character right its mm-hmm. story then the positioning of uh, by the studio so if you have a uh, romantic comedy, you have few different ways of positioning it. You may do more romantic or less romantic or more comedic, right? You, you have this scale of mm-hmm. that. So you look at it from this, from this, uh, like almost like a, a, a mirror of like uh, magnifying uh, sort of lens. So you have the product that most likely won't change. And then you have approach that is changing of mm-hmm. from the producers or marketing or you name it. So you have this. And you have me interpreting what they want to say, right? So if they want to turn the scale up a little bit on the romantic side or a little less on comedic because it's harder for people to understand comedy than, than, um, than uh, a, a romantic elements. So we go from there. So I'm learning, I'm looking at this, how they're interpreting the original material. And then there is my part that I'm collecting the data. So if I was to take assets from this film and present them in a different ways what kind of emotions i will get what kind of reactions from a client i will get oh this is too romantic now i know that this image is perceived in my head as not so romantic but others are taking it very romantic so i memorize that right if something is funny for me may not be funny for you so if i was to create something that it's funny for me i can be laughing designing it and the client was like i i I just don't get the joke sir so Mm -hmm. i don't know what you're trying to achieve and now i know that i went too far or uh, or this is not my sense of humor Mm -hmm. and actually my sense of humor is really particular so that that i'm not going far with this uh so i'm collecting this kind of this kind of uh uh, uh, by data right Mm -hmm. so and i learn over time that most people don't get my jokes actually that's mm-hmm. a true story. Uh, they just don't get my jokes. So I'm not even trying to sneak it in anymore. So at the beginning, I was super clever and funny. Ha ha, funny. No, not Didn't really. Work. <laughs> Didn't work out. So this is data I've collected. Don't try it, man. Don't Just don't try yeah. it because you'll fail, most likely. So I collect this this uh, mid-data, actually, from, from uh, uh, what my interpretation of the original uh, idea is that goes back and it's illustrated by me. So I collect this data as well. So my initial thought is it's stored there and the client's reaction to it. And then I compare it like, oh, you know, in the past I had the good luck with the scary faces. I have pretty good sense of what scary face looked like. 
okay, that's pretty good. So when I'm working, I'm looking into my database and mind I'm like, oh, this is pretty, pretty freaking scary. Okay, cool. Okay, I think that's that may be successful. Then I send it and it's confirmed or, or changed or, mm -hmm. or denied, right? So I get this extra uh, point, another uh, notch to, to, mm -hmm. to my data. It's like, okay. So over time, you have hundreds, if not thousands of them. So you become more fluent and you see it like right away. This will never work. Mm -hmm. Or this is way too funny. So no, most likely, mm -hmm. no. People will not get the joke from it. That's why comedy posters are the hardest for me to design mm -hmm. because I don't see the jokes. What's funny for me it's slightly different funny that's for for uh, uh, most common uh, uh, viewers mm. it's like sometimes for i don't know why uh for uh, uh, most people funny is standing back to back and looking at each other weird i don't find it funny at all uh but a lot of people do um or, or maybe, maybe we should try to do we should try it sounds something like this or a little dog um yeah. i don't find it funny but people do so you collect this and then then you have to memorize this. You have to remember it constantly, every single second, because you go to a meeting and you're being asked live questions. Do you think it will work? You go back to your mind. It takes a split second. No, it won't work. Then your expertise, this is your expertise, right? If you have this database and you can access it immediately, then this is your expertise. If I was to say like, you know, let me do some research and I'll get back to you next week. I don't look like a, a, a confident dude there. Uh, if I can say it on the spot and it's actually turned out to be true, then it's it's a great thing. Well, so that's this, a sign that you're a professional. Yes, exactly. That I've been there, I've done that, and I've analyzed what I have done, right? To, to learn and, mm -hmm. and teach others. So that was part of my job actually at, at Netflix too, to serve as this database of what works, what doesn't work mm -hmm. in, in, in the past. So if I was to, if I was to promise something that would never work, that's not good for me. Mm -hmm. So luckily we went through a few hundred projects and I did not, as far as I know, I did not fail much there. Mm -hmm. uh, there were, there were moments where I was off, but most likely there was, there was a good, mm -hmm. good, good job. And then based on that, I've learned again mm -hmm. too. So it gets, gets better over time. So I can't imagine if I'm 105 year old, that will be like super smart guy. Do you watch the movies that you design posters for? Uh, yes and no. Uh, sometimes when, uh, there is something even not finished uh, elements of it yes but that creates a problem too because you know it too well and you latch on details mm. so you know it too well that's that's the problem with the producers and directors in a way don't get me wrong guys but uh they know too much about the film if they were emotionally involved too exactly too so if they're developing the script with the with the whoever is developing the script they they work on the details they've seen what it was when it worked and what didn't and and they're emotionally attached to it so let's say like they've been surrounded by this for three to five years right uh if not more they know too much and imagine a joe walking by the poster he or joina has no idea about what the movie is about how do I present this complicated story to him? I can't make it as complicated as director will see it. That's often creates a tension between a uh, uh, agency or whoever is designing poster and a producer or distributor. They think too deeply about mm -hmm. this and that there, then there's this disconnect. And just, it comes down to understanding that it's going to be presented to people that have no idea about it, literally. If somebody can just comprehend that, mm -hmm. it's, it's super easy later on to, mm -hmm. to design for that. So, uh, yes, we do watch movies sometimes, but I would rather not. I would rather get a verbal uh, 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 description. Uh, uh, description, synopsis mm -hmm. of, of, of the main elements, pivotal moments or potential spoilers that I should be avoiding and not go into. And I can start with that or imagery, mm -hmm. literally. So these are elements. Script, again, English is my second language. This is the toughest stuff for me to learn. It's like reading Macbeth, literally a script. It's a terrible thing. It's a waste of, of time for me too, because for seven hours, some people read it in like 50 minutes. Uh, it takes me seven hours uh, and I'm even more confused than prior to, to reading this. So mm -hmm. script, not really, not a good idea to me at least. Um, something visual, uh, a cues, verbal cues of, on what to we thought that this may be. Uh, this is a good start for, 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 for me. With the series, it's something uh, totally different. I have to watch them on like triple speed because I can't during the day watch like three original series 
and then and then uh, uh, go and work. So I'm only uh, uh, checking the visual uh, side of it. Sometimes I don't even know how uh, uh, the characters sound, mm -hmm. which which is really interesting. So yeah, uh, Netflix is different uh, uh, than my prior job. It's uh, more demanding because we have more of that. Uh, it's different, but it's I think it's challenging. It constantly challenges you. Well, this is awesome, Tomasz. So while I am wondering is what's next? Next is innovation for me. So how do I apply this knowledge and create something new, influence others uh, and make what we do better, uh, faster, smarter, uh, 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 different, uh, ahead of somebody else. So that's that's what's next. And that's uh, we may meet again uh, two three years from now and we'll see what was next. Well, thank you so much, Tamás. It's been really inspiring and interesting story. And um, I've learned something today. Thank you.